The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman on this 24th day of April. My pleasure to be here. And uh, we're looking at a fascinating market. One, the reason why I say it's fascinating is because for the very first time in a very long time, well over a year, we've seen some of the most important stocks start to take it on the chin. And a boxing expression. And uh, as a result, the split personality, or we could call it a bifurcation, between different sectors is showing up a large right now. So I'm going to go through the, through the numbers. The E-mini is down 10 at 25.61. You can see this nine period on the daily chart, this nine period moving average was support for the last three days. It's been a repellent, just hasn't been able to hold that support. Um, most importantly, the MACD is still holding very well. If you look at the 0% line of the uh, MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, it's at a plus 5.41 which is very good. The relative strength is failing. The stochastic is now under 80% failing. The unbalanced volume is failing. I can't put my, um, one of the reasons why for my opening call subscribers is that we've had some positions in lower price stocks thinking that they would be under the radar. In a sense, maybe they're under the radar, but in fact, we're out of them now. And another thing that's really important is that I decided because of the action over the past two days, not including today, the past two days, um, the reason why uh, I've said to subscribers, if you are long a particular sector that we are trying, or two sectors we went long today, the moment you're long, start putting in the stops because we want to see rallies hold because if rallies go to a certain level where we can raise the stop to at least break even or in one case we made uh, we made a couple of points. Um, I don't want to be stopped out having today. The first hour was a two in one session. We're seeing many, many of these sessions over the last month. Basically, I, I remember even seeing a three in one session. There was a huge move down in the futures and a huge move up. And then basically it gave it all back. That's like a three in one day. We've already had in one hour, we've had um, a two in one day. And that says that you've got to be taking profits on the long side as quickly as you can. And at the same time, the larger picture, and I had a number of questions uh, going into the show uh, starting last night, a number of questions saying intermediate term, you've indicated that you're more negative than positive. Has that changed? And the answer is absolutely not. In fact, I am. So, I can't believe that I allowed myself to be stopped out of the when we were short the QQQs an hour and, and less than a point from the all time high. I did not expect because we haven't held the 300 percent positions all that long before. We usually have them for a short period of time. That's kind of what they're made for. But you will find that there are times when you can hold it for the longer term if you get a really good entry. Even though every single day there's a diminishing return, in other words, every single day it's recalculated, and that's what I didn't take into consideration when we got stopped out. What was it, about the 16th or so uh, of the month um, after such a great entry point? We took, I can't complain. We got some really good gains on the way down, but I wanted to be holding this because my contention is that Google, um, Google, Amazon, they, I just, how many times have I been through them to say they've made tops in the dailies that have now influenced the weeklies with a really good chance that we could see the monthly charts being impacted. And that's, I'm very strongly, I'm feeling that very strongly now. Look at Google, peak E alphabet, social media, made an all-time high at 1177.45, then 11.76.76. Chapman with two bar reversal with the doji candle at the high on uh, that was in March 6th, uh, 12th, March the 12th. And uh, yeah, this is a big move. 
Uh, I think that the 200 period moving average support of 1,026 is going to go. So now let's run the numbers. The Dow, INDU. The Dow is down right now 170 points at 24,277. We were long via the three, three times long. Um, prior to the opening this morning, it hit a level where I said you can raise the stop, and then we raised the stop, so we were out of break even. I probably should have been shorting, not buying. I mean, but the MACD said there's some internal strength. So let me get rid of this because we are no longer long. The, so the parameters to watch is this trend line, the breakout falling axe trend line, the Chapman wave, around about 24,150. A close below that would be very negative. Um, and the upside, now you've got the... It's interesting, On the, for my subscribers, I said this morning, we want to see the 24,500 20, 24, hits because that gives it a chance. If it can hold, sustainability is key. If it can hold, we could then see the 24,600s. Well, it did that in the opening gambit, and now it's down to 24,297 level. Not good. If you look at the S&P, SPX.X, the S&P is down 8.77 at 2661, made a little doji candle high. Peak B, that was in the 120-minute chart, gave a nice signal. Now it's pulled back. It's under the nine-period moving average. The MACD is still pretty darn good. But the stochastic has gone under 80%, just like the down the daily. This is not, not very good because it makes it so much harder now to get back to the 2700s. And you've got 2640s as key support. QQQ, QQQ has been smacked minus 1.11%, one of the bigger percentage de moves down in the sectors. And it's 160.14. It took out yesterday's low. The MACD is not that good. Stochastics now down at 68% on balance volume training. I'm afraid I don't see any way in the next at least six weeks for us to even get close to the all-time high of 175. 21. More likely we're going to be testing the 150, 159 to 153 area over the coming weeks, even though there could be a bounce in between. IWM, and then we'll go to a break and we'll be coming back for the gold and dollar, etc. 155.75 or 44 cents in the IWM, holding quite well. Holding quite well doesn't make it a leader. It just says holding quite well. One of the better chart formations. Still not enough oomph to get to the 159 so that you can say, aha, now 160.62, the all-time high, is in hurdling distance just to, to get there. I don't see that just yet. Next thing we will we'll go to, we'll do it right now, is we want to be looking at the SMHs because that's really important. Up 26 cents, having been very strong earlier on uh, compared to all the other days. I'm just saying intraday it was strong, giving it pretty much back. We were lucky we did get in the 300% uh, long, took a two-point gain, and now it's pulling back some. I'm very much afraid that the semiconductors are telling us about the bigger picture, and the bigger picture says this peak D, almost certainly to form in the monthly chart, will probably last at least another couple of months. That's what I'm thinking. Now I want to go to the, um, now I'll go to gold. Gold right now is up $6.60 at 60 cents. At 1330.60 to quite a hit on the way down. Remember, I said the weekly chart still in a holding pattern, trading band with the 13, 1356s as resistance and 1318, somewhere around 1318s. Really important support to hold. And as we go to the break, I'll pop up the dollar. The dollar right now is, was up a little bit. Now it's down seven cents at 19.88 leg D. I'll be right back. Would you like exposure to the foreign currency markets without any downside risk to your principal? Then consider the Petro Currencies Market Safe CD from Everbank. This three year US dollar denominated CD leverages the performance of four equally weighted currencies from these top oil producing countries Brazil, Canada, Mexico, and Russia. This CD features a 200% leverage factor, which means that your potential upside payment will be double the currency's average performance at maturity with no cap if the currencies increase in value over the CD's term. And if the returns are negative, your principal is 100% protected. Returns are based on CD performance with no correlation to the price of oil, and there is no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. The April 19th funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a division of TIAA FSB member FDIC. 
Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Basil takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Well, folks, we're back. So um, the Dow's down 248. This could really become an ugly day because now you've got those maybe 10 NASDAQ stocks that are really weakening, and they've been the leaders. And not only that, you've got Triple M, which was an incredible leader. All of, look at this, all the way going into January of this this year, January hits 259.77, down $17, down almost 8% at 198. Not good. Peak D, this is a hat trick top on. This is a worry. Triple M, 3M, multinational conglomerate. In, in everything. I mean, this is a, it was a benchmark on the way up because it is in everything. And look at this on the way down. Gee, let me just look at Berkshire Hathaway and then we'll go to some of the other things I wanted to continue on. Uh, Berkshire Hathaway, BRK.B. This is the B shares, um, down 92 cents. Look at that peak E in the uh, monthly chart. Hmm, this is something to be concerned about. Okay, here we go. So let's go back to the dollar. Now, if you're looking at the dollar, the dollar has held very nicely. It's done this left side, right side, price time match um, in the cup formation. It's This is also very important. Something I discussed quite a while ago, actually the September 8th or 9th, the low that was made, remember, I, that's where we started buying the dips in the dollar. Um, and we're long again the dollar. One of the things I say is there is a chance, and we don't know this yet because these things unfold. If they aren't discussed, they unfold in background, and nothing's been discussed yet. So I'm saying it seems to me that there's a chance that somewhere in the administration they're wanting someone, some faction, some sect, I don't know who it is, are wanting the dollar to actually rally some. At this particular point, I, I don't know what the reason could be, but they want, and you've got the dollar actually rallying, but this is nothing. Until the dollar is really trading securely in the 9170s, 9220 area, if we can get there, that's something completely different. Move above the nine period moving average in the monthly chart for the first time since it broke down way back in 2017. What was that? That was May, almost a year ago. It broke down. That was up in the 98s. So let's just go through this again. You've got the euro currency wise. You've got the euro uh, pulling back. And now it's having a bit of a rally today, pulling back very sharply. 
it's at 1.229 and i said if the if the euro go, closes under 1.22 two, i think i said two um triple two um that would be a negative because it would be underneath the left side low of 1.22 1.39 and yes it's gone there today's low is in fact one point who 1.218 now it's trying to reverse up and i'm also thinking that i'm going to watch i'm going to go to yields in a moment um so that's the euro now it's at the bottom end of this rectangle that i said so far is kind of secure in that it's held those support levels multi times but now you've got the lowercase h within the rectangle formation i'll make it real clear a close below the low of today 1.218 let's call it 1.214 a close below 1.214 would be very negative so this this bounce is going to be important and if you look at the usd jpy you're looking at the opposite where it's spiraled to the upside in leg d just like the dollar it's getting very close, but it hasn't held close enough to go to 109.57. That's the 200 period simple moving average in the daily. It did touch the weekly one um, this morning. It's pulling it a little bit back, but that's become a magnet. So, so far, there's a leg D with good technicals in the, in the yen, USD, JPY, currency pair. Hey, look at this. Silver. You remember silver had those fantastic candles. Silver has a way of doing this. Wow, if ever you want to be jilted, get married to silver. Wow, it could do anything at any time. It looks like it's fantastic and it turns around. Then it looks like it's horrible and it turns around. Wow, this is a fair weather friend if ever there was. I'm just saying to you, well, watch out. Silver's saying that we're still stuck in the range. Now let's go to the TLT. So I get my uh, email here. Now what does it say? It's going to have to go all the way back. Who, who, where? There it is, way back to... This morning at 18 minutes past 10. Bold letters. How come you don't mention the 10-year note hitting 3%? Interest rates is what really behind the, mar the market here. Keep rallying the troops. You remind me of Jim Cramer. I'm sure this won't be mentioned. Um, actually, two things. One is I've mentioned it almost every single day. I've been pointing out the, the yields. I mean, I don't know how much more. Uh, this is a person that's been talking yields for 20 years. So don't tell me about I'm not talking yields and don't tell me that I didn't talk about a change in, in my Japanization of bond yields that I kept talking about for over 20 years about going down to zero just as it happened in Japan and that this was the first transition period I've ever discussed and we're in that transi transition period. We have not broken to the upside, but we still have to call it a potential transition period. Now, let me explain why. Because if you look at the TLT, it's down 12 cents at 118.37. Two green candles yesterday and today. Days young, we'll see what happens. But the pattern says in the monthly chart, and look at this, the monthly chart is breaking absolutely important resistance. And I, how many times do I have to show? Let's do it again. Here's the TNX. I'm going to squeeze this chart. Paul, I hope you're looking. This is a chart that goes back to 1981. 1980, let's just get it, whoops, 1982. Right there, the high that was made, right, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, stop. The high that was made at 100, well, these numbers obviously get changed because it's a, a rolling contract. It is a continuous, con, uh, continuous contract. So this is the yield, the high that was made in September of 1981, I remember that very well, um, and it was at 158.40. I don't remember the price. I just remember the fact that it went there. And then it pulls back. And then the, the crash of, 19, uh, of October 19, 1987 starts the upside of the down channel that would last from 19, just, as, just the down channel. That's not the high that was made back in 1981. The Japanization of, of Japanese, the Japanization of yields that the Japanese suffered through all those years I said there's a good chance that we will be experiencing that. And the 10-year Treasury note interest rate, look, has this green line right here. Now I'm going to expand it so you can see the down channel held beautifully. Now the upside Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone or resistance zone is not acting as a repellent at this particular time. Look at it. We've broken to the upside of that green line. First time in decades 
that we've closed three, well, we can't talk about April yet, but it looks like three months above the downtrend line. That downtrend line comes in now at about 27.50, 2.75, and we're trading at 2.979, having hit 3.0. Oh, three. Yes, Paul, it did go to 3%. And I've been saying that in the background, although it takes time, there's a real good chance that yields could become one, not the, but one of the areas that creates an issue in the market, in a market that's needed um, a hook, and they've got the hook. In other words, there wasn't any headline now you start to get headlines and you can say, oh, higher interest rates. Hey, it's not just higher interest rates. It's the fact that Amazon, Google, Facebook, um, Netflix, maybe not Netflix. Let me see if Netflix is. Um, yep, Netflix are all topping. That's Platinum, it. grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan. Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profiles So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, hey folks. So just quickly, I was asked about the 30-year. The 30-year hasn't even broken into the inside track, the monthly inside track uh, start of the repellent line, that's the red line. And it's trading at 31.50, made a high of 32.0, uh, 3221, 3.221 in February. And it just has to go one penny above that and stars leg D. And that would be the quickest and smallest, sorry, not the quickest, but the smallest upside from the peak A to a B to a C to a D that you probably can get. For. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying the 30 year is lagging. 
The uh, ten-year and the five-year are very important. They're doing very well. And if I can just go to, oh, I'll do this. As I'm doing this, setting this up right here, I want to also mention a couple of things. I would said to subscribers, I didn't really want to have in my newsletter um, the G, uh, what is it, it's GBTC. That is the Bitcoin ETF. One of the reasons is it trades Bitcoin trades all, almost all the time, and you're only in the market here between 9.30 and 4, maybe 4 or 5 or something. I, that, I, I can't do that. What if there's a huge move down at some point? You can't even put your stop in. So I said, I'll, I'll follow it. Now, I'll just tell you about it. And what I had said a few days ago, that GBTC had moved. Uh, let me just move there for the moment here. GBTC, which is the Bitcoin ETF, it's called Bitcoin Investment Trust, had started to act very well. And I said, yep, now I can start to move a little bit better. Um, and it's in a leg C. What it had, left side, right side, price time, it had a very nice move. It's up $1.14 at 16.39. So the question is, let's see. Um, Hello, Basil. I'm long GW. Oh, oh, that's a different one. I thought it was the GBTC. Um, I'm, and he said, I've been long for two and a half years. And I'm thinking, wow, this guy's fantastic. He gets in at a dollar or something, is trading at a dollar six. That's a, that's a, that is a huge gain. Um, so, OK, that's different. All right. There was a question from yesterday that I had left over. Let me just say that, yes, Bitcoin is active active right now. I think it's partly in lieu of what's going on in the market. So th there's always players want action. I think that you're getting it here. This is a leg C. There should be a D. It's still in a trading band in the weekly chart. GPTC at 16.40 up, 1.14. So we don't have it. I, I'll, I'll follow it, but I'm not officially having it as a, one of our picks in my newsletter. Probably I should have because... The lows that were made recently were exactly the opposite of the highs that were made back in January when everybody was talking 40,000, 50,000, 60,000, whatever. Now everyone's saying, well, it's longer term, this longer term. So now it can have a really nice bounce, and that's what it's doing. So that was that question. The next question was, hello, Basil. I'm long GWPH for two years, been holding. It looks like a breakout here. Any target? Thank you, Mike. So, Mike, this is what I'm looking at here. We did miss our entry point into this GWPH, which is GW Pharmaceuticals, PLC, it's medical marijuana. It's $138.95 of $1.94. Um, I like what it's doing here. My suspicion is that it's going to be in a chop, chop, sideways move. With, with Now it's going to make higher lows and higher highs, but still very choppy. That's what I'm expecting. So I like the action. It makes it 138. It makes the 135 to 132 very nice uh, support to, to consider a break below that says, OK, now I can retest the 128, 126 area. But it, I think it's made a low for this particular phase and that it should go sideways with higher lows and higher highs. Still on my list for my subscribers. We'll have to wait for a deeper pullback and then we might be getting in. Next question I had was, um, uh, yes, ITA. ITA. Do I, have I done ITA for a while? This is the ITA. Oh, oh, this is the PPA. PPA is the, this is the comparable, comparable one that I like. This is the ISHA's U.S. aerospace and um, defense sector. I like the PPA because I've just followed it for years and years. It's gone to a leg C and a very sharp pullback. And one of the reasons I'm going to say this over and over is I think that Boeing has had its big move and that there's a lot more downside to come in time and I think in price. Not 100% sure just yet for the downside. It's very easy. I mean, you can just you pick up Boeing and you say, oh, the last major support was at 300, uh, around about 312 or so. Um, if it takes that out, it goes to 308. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to say is that we haven't even, this is a leg F and a failure pattern in leg F in the daily retracement after the big high that was made back in, what did I say it was, 370? Is that the one that was 371? Yeah, 371.60 on the 28th of February. So this to me is the arch formation. It's actually more like inverted V, but I'm going to call it an arch for now. And I suspect we can go one step at a time. If at any point in the next week, it doesn't have to be even a week, it could be as soon as 
Wednesday, well, it's a little over a week, about a week. If it takes, if it closes under 319, that's a long way down. But if it does close below 319, there's just a really good chance that it's forming a cup from an arch formation after the cup has failed on the right side. It's called a right shaft wave right arm failure, or sorry, right shoulder failure. And if it closes Friday way under the 332 nine period exponential moving average, there's just a very good chance that 300, the nine period moving average support in the monthly chart, will be tested sometime late April or maybe in sometime in May. Maybe late May, but sometime in May. That's the way I'm looking at upside. I still consider extreme limited in Boeing. The next question I had is Triple M. Didn't I just do it? Yeah, I did Triple M. This is not a good sign when Triple M breaks down like this. And this is really one of the, the multinationals you want to keep an eye on. That says to me, don't root out this whole thing about the dollar. I know nobody's talking about it. But let me tell you. The action of the dollar, the way it held so well when gold was actually moving very sharply and the gold stocks moved up, said to me something's going on. I think this is heavy metal. I think this is not just fund managers or hedge funds. Governments, I think, are behind this move. This looks to me like a potential breakout in the monthly. If there's a trade, even just a one-day hit, of 92.25, it changes this monthly technically for a very positive move. It might just be short term. I don't know. You know, currencies don't move short term. They usually move in big expanses of time. So let's just keep our eye on the dollar. As I say for the subscribers, re remain along the dollar. Next question is, um, oops, uh, HGX. So have a look at this. This is the HGX. So. Um, Palti Homes comes out with a good report today um, and is up 96 at 29.77. We remain short. We've been taking profits on the way down, but we remain short from 33 and a half. That's uh, about two points of the, well, less than two points of the all time high. I'm just, I think it's worth staying in that position as long as we can. The Home Builder is down at 198 at 308.30. That's the HEX Philadelphia housing sector. Housing index, not sector, housing index. Under the nine period average in the monthly chart, this is serious stuff. Just serious stuff. Let's see what Toll Brothers is doing because they are perhaps uh, one of the leaders. Uh, leaders on the way down. Look at that. Not good. Yeah, this is telling me housing and yields, they don't go too well together when it gets a little bit extenuated in the, uh, in the yields going higher. All right, we'll be back. Dow's down 260. I'll be right back. Hi, folks. Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! Larry Pesavento will be hosting a 90-minute webinar this coming Tuesday, April 24th, for all Fibonacci 24-7 subscribers. Larry has teamed up with fellow trader Jim Bart Bartoloni for this informative 90-minute workshop, taking the ABCD pattern to the next level. Throughout this 90-minute live webinar, some of the topics Larry and Bart will be discussing include the origin of the 1.618, the golden mean, the relationship between numbers and cycles, time and price, 
the simple math behind market moves, and much, much more. This workshop will be archived if you can't attend live, and all new subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee when signing up for Fibonacci 24-7 so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today while gaining access to Larry and Bart's webinar Taking the ABCD Pattern to the Next Level, visit the front page of TFNN.com now. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Hi, folks. So we've had a very patient caller. It's just waiting, waiting, waiting. And I keep, I, I, you know, it's just my fault. I saw the name of them. It just got carried away, yakety yakety. Richard in Oregon. Richard, thank you so much for holding. How are you? Whoops. Thought he was there. Richard, are you there? Um, I hope so. All right, well, um, Richard, if you are not there, then I apologize sincerely. I meant to get to you, and then I just got carried away. Um, so what we're, we're looking at here is, and yesterday I did the same thing. Oh, i got to stop that. Hey, Mr. Engineer Al, just yell and scream at me, pop it into the den or wherever you see me. If I'm rambling along, forgetting about our wonderful callers. So here we go. Nova Gold, one of the one of the stocks that in the gold sector that we often use as a, as a proxy. If I'm looking to go long in the in the sector, well, we did nothing this time except and this is a pity because it went from under four and it went to uh, four dollars and uh, ninety four cents this morning. It's acted really well and it's in a leg D. And this is the thing that's, you know, it's the same as the MACD, the moving average convergence divergence in the daily charts have held so well, and yet the price on the down, the S&P have been failing, which says you've got a divergence where one thing is actually acting well, the other isn't. Well, this is the same thing. Gold is acting, got a completely different chart formation. And here, the, some of the gold stocks, yesterday we spent some time looking at Royal Gold. Now we're looking at Nova Gold. Lovely move. This is a gray leg C to the upside. I have to say that based on the MACD and stochastic in the weekly chart, I'm going to call it a regular C with a buy mode that it should go to a D. And the, the monthly chart has improved. This is what I want to see in the dollar if it's ever going to do that. Their monthly chart is way more positive now for Nova Gold. So now let's just do the nitty gritties. And first of all, apologies, Richard. I hope you're listening. So if you were long Nova, I, I'm not sure if Richard is long. I, I'm not sure um, if he has a position at all. Um, so if you're long, I would just say hold this long position, but since it's a leg D and gold has been pulling back quite sharply and the dollar is in leg D, look, hey, folks, look at this left side chart. You see this leg D in the Chapman Wave methodology? That's the fourth highest leg. Now keep your eye on that same chart. Keep looking, keep looking. Look at this. What's the letter? Letter D. Also quite strong. Isn't that funny? Yeah, you've got the dollar going up to a D, a very strong move, and yet you've got Nova Gold. I like this. This is the thing that I was looking at the other day. Remember about a week and a half ago, or maybe just over a week ago, I said, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with the way gold is acting, more impressed with the way silver is acting, but that's not issue, the issue. The issue is that there are some of the stocks that have failed to move, but there are some stocks that have acted really well. It's almost as if 
they've individually been doing very well financially, and that's what's being reflected here. All I can say is that Nova Gold is holding very nice. Even today, it's given back half the gains at 480, but it still looks good. Here's my recommendation. I'm going to suggest to you, on a shorter-term basis, there's one of two things that I would do. I try to, if you are in a safe from the 440 area, I would try to keep that a little longer, but I would definitely want to take something off to reward yourself in leg D, because the stochastics only at 77% and the MACD is not that good in the daily chart. The price is very good. So I'm going to say to you, you can either take something off right here at 480, keep your core position, keep, take something off here, or maybe you want to put it in at about 480. 68, just a little bit low, like 10 cents below where we are right now. There's still time in the day for gold to maybe to have a bounce if the dollar uh, if the dollar starts to uh, weaken. So somewhere around here, you can take a little bit off. Try to plan to put it back if there was an arch formation and it came back somewhere into the 448 uh, to 444 area. If you aren't in it right now, I'm going to say that 448 to the 444, that's an area that we're going to both be watching. Give me a call when that happens. Let's look at it together. That's where other things are going to happen. And I'll tell you why. The 200 period moving average right now is at 4.53. 4 the nine period moving average in the weekly chart is at 4.49. So I'm saying that if it cuts under that and closes under that, that'll impact the weekly quite a bit. Um, just to say now it's making the upside tougher to get to. But in the meantime, it's held very well. On the day, I'd have a little bit of, you know, I'd stop maybe 20 cents, 15 cents below where we are right now. Let it take you out. Or right now at 480, you can say, you know what? It's acted well. The technicals are not really confirming. I don't want to get out of my hold position. If you have no position, all I can say is I would have to, I would wait. So if you have a position, keep try to keep the call as long as you can. But the, as a trading position, You'd be t I'd be taking something off here just because this leg D, the previous previous one gave a sharp pullback. I'm not sure that it'll happen here. It looks like it could, but I'm just watching this very closely. And I'm very impressed that the, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly have had very good moves. Keep your eye on the three charts right now, folks. If you're looking uh, at this in Tiger TV, look at the three. Look at this. Yes, gold. Gold is held okay in the weekly. Monthly is not bad. That daily is going to be very important because it's suggesting it's just chop, chop, chopping in this narrow range. Well, it's not a narrow range if you're in it, but if you're visualizing it, it's a fairly narrow range. So that's my contention. Oh, the other thing is gold right now is up 9.7. The reason why I'm saying probably I wouldn't just take off Nova Gold right here. I'd rather let's see if it can drop another 15 cents. Why? Because gold was six point, up 6.6 .6 or up 7 when we started the show. Now it's at 9.4. If the XLF continues to be very weak, and it's up two cents, it's very weak, meaning it's not running sharply when yields are up, and theoretically it should be much, much higher, then I would suggest to you that if the bank index, the XLF, pulls back sharper and closes under 27 in the next three days, that's where you might see gold move up. Maybe you could even have gold and the dollar move in the same direction for a little bit doesn't happen more than a few weeks, a few times a year. This might be one of those times. So I am impressed. If you're looking at Royal Gold, pulling back here after the PKF and the daily, hey, look at that monthly chart. Still very impressive. Next question I had is, um, um, oh, there we go. This is a good question. Uh, Mike wants to know, uh, What's my take on the regional banks, RF specifically? Let's go to RF. This is very interesting. Region, Reasons Financial Core trading at 18.98, up 12 cents, up 0.66% when the Dow is down 1.16. And uh, that, that's very impressive. So I'm saying uh, this is a new leg A to the upside at $19. It has very strong support between 1873 and 1855. 1861 is the nine period moving average. The weekly chart might be making a right shoulder failure pattern. All I can say is I agree with you. It's, it's done very nicely. Um, 
I would keep my eye on this as one of those counterpoint things where the counter move for the um, some, some issues, some sectors, some stocks is saying, we're ignoring what's going on because we have some good fundamentals here. So I'm just going to say to you, if you're all long, it's good. I really would like to see it hold. I wouldn't like to see it close under 18.40. That would be not good. But this right here, I'll talk about it when we get back. There are a whole bunch of other questions I'll deal with. Uh, Bowser Trap and Tiger Conditions are 1,000, 280, yes, it is 19. I'll be right I'm back. certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the rank as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full custom capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge heard here at TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So uh, the transportation IYTI shares down 1.98 at 189. Uh, this, is a, this is a negative pattern. You can see there's an arch formation forming in the weekly chart. Peak E monthly. Uh, I'm watching because I don't want to see the transportation average uh, plunge below 182 in the next two weeks because that, that's just not going to be good. Um, okay. Next question was KRE. This is the regional banks. This is the uh, the sector regional spider fund it went to a, a leg so that's trough d and then it goes a b it's in leg c it's holding quite nicely i want to keep my eye very strongly on this um, regional area because the regionals could still see nice nice goings on uh, with their local banks etc so it's holding well 62.20 it's a pity it's at the low of the day even though it gapped up it's telling me that it's being affected by the market. So this has to be, there's a, a chance of a head, a head and shoulders weekly. Let's just say it's holding well. And at 62.21, it needs to break today's high of 62.99. And it needs to do it by Friday at the latest without taking out 61.60.
probably that's going to be the support to, to hold. Hope that answers Sarah's question. Uh, Boeing, oh, Boeing has earnings tomorrow. Ooh, -hoo. Boeing has earnings tomorrow. Um, to tell you the truth, I hope the earnings are phenomenal. I hope that Boeing is down nine right now, but tomorrow it is up 15 points or something like that. Why? Because that monthly and that weekly, the, the, they, they seem to be saying to me that Boeing still has to do a lot more testing in the 315 to 310 area over the coming weeks. And that's where I'd be watching it. However, um, if it starts to trade in the 352 area for any day, a whole day, closes there for any day in the, in the next week and a half, wow. I'm going to have to say, huh, maybe I'm wrong, but I just, this is not a good pattern that I'm looking at in the, the daily, weekly, or the monthly. Monthly is holding well, but I'm starting to see signs of, of, of weakness there. We'll see. Okay, so I'll be back with Tom later today, and I have to say thank you to everyone, and uh, have a wonderful day. And I'll be back tomorrow. Stay tuned. Steve Rose stays tuned for Dave White. Stay tuned for Tom. Don't forget this. Uh, this got. Uh, you've got a webinar tonight with Larry event. No matter what kind of trader you are, 2018 is a great time to try out a subscription to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report. Whether you just plan on diversifying your portfolio with some exposure to gold and gold mining equities, or you're a gold bull that sees 2018 as the year of commodities, now is a great time to sign up for the Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his Gold Report every Monday morning before the market opens and covers a variety of topics including gold, silver, platinum, copper, the XAU and HUI, the dollar, bonds, South African Rand, as well as more than 20 of the most actively traded mining equities. Start your 2018 off with a bang and sign up for The Gold Report today. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. For all the details and to start your subscription right now, visit the front page of TFNN.com and you'll find The Gold Report under Investment Newsletters.